What if we bend the ends of the transmission line away from each other? Let's do this by just the tiniest amount at first, say a section of just lambda over 50. So I'm going to take this one, and this is obviously not drawn to scale, but here the currents are flowing in that direction, and here the currents are flowing in this direction. And so we're going to assume this is just a really short section of transmission line, lambda over 50, smaller than lambda over 50. So we're also assuming here that the total load impedance at the end is still matched to the transmission line. Look at the direction of the current in the two super short sections at the end of the transmission line. They are parallel to each other and they're also the current is flowing in the same direction. And what happens as the current flows in this direction? Well, we're going to get a buildup of charges at one end of the transmission line relative to the other. So if we say current is direction of positive charge, here we're going to get a net negative charge and on the top we'll get a net positive charge. This leads to separation of charge. One end is more positively charged compared to the other end and a separation of charge equals a dipole. In fact, what we've created here is the simplest form of a dipole antenna namely a Hertzian dipole antenna. We saw earlier what the electric fields look like in the vicinity of an isolated electron. So now the question is, what do the electric fields look like around the dipole antenna? We can visualize this first by considering the orientation of the electric fields at the end of a regular transmission line. The two conductors, as shown here, are oppositely charged, and the electric field extends from the positively charged conductor to the negatively charged conductor. We saw this in the transmission lines section of this course. Then, as the conductors are rotated away from each other, the electric fields start to bend around and between the two conductors. And we can imagine what these fields might look like in three dimensions, as you can see here comparing the left and the right sides of this screen. By the way, we also have magnetic fields in the vicinity of the antenna, and to imagine what they look like, just follow the right-hand rule. Your thumb points in the direction of the current, and the fingers curl around the dipole antenna so that the magnetic field circles around the dipole antenna. Next, what do the electric fields look like as they propagate away from the antenna? To answer this, consider a dipole antenna excited by a sinusoidal source, like the one shown here. This Here's the dipole, and the source would be over here. At time t equals zero, the current on the dipole is zero, and the net charge on the antenna is zero, and so there are no accelerating electrons yet on the dipole, and no electric field disturbances being produced. As time progresses, the current on the dipole starts to increase, and as the current increases, electrons start to accelerate towards the bottom half of the dipole. So we have, let's say we have all these free electrons here, so they're going to start to accelerate in a downward direction. So before this happens, the electric field is, they're all pointing inward here, electric field, and then as the electrons start to accelerate downward, here's our dipole, then the electric field is going, there's going to be a disturbed electric field, so it's going to kind of point downward now suddenly, and so we get, this is the disturbed electric field from the accelerating electrons. And you might remember this is a similar diagram to what we drew earlier in the EMP design challenge. The moment the EMP reaches the aluminum skin of the airplane, except it's just in reverse. Here we're trying, we're imagining radiating a signal, and there uh, we were receiving a signal. This electric field disturbance then starts to propagate away from the dipole at the speed of light. So C is equal to lambda F, and F is 1 over T. 
So due to the direction of current flow, the top half of the dipole has a net positive charge, as we discussed, relative to the bottom half of the dipole. So not only is an electric field disturbance created, but the ends of the electric fields remain connected to the dipole because of the separation of charge. So this means after a quarter of a period, the current reaches a maximum and the electric field disturbance will have traveled a distance time times C meters per second. So the time after a quarter of a period, T over four, capital T is a period, times lambda over T, that's our C, and we get lambda over four. So these electric fields, this electric field disturbance, we're going to get electric field disturbance and also a connection of the top conductor to the bottom conductor. So in other words, after a quarter of a period, the electric field lines are going to look like this. They will have propagated this distance, lambda over four away from the dipole, and they'll be connected still to the dipole because there is still a separation of charge. Spend a minute and draw a diagram of what you think the electric fields will look like a little bit later in time at time t equals capital T over 2, so another quarter of a period later.